just found this interesting component uh, while I was looking at something else. And I just wanted to take a look at it and show you how it works inside. It's something that isn't really found anymore. It's a tele television component out of a, a PAL color TV set. It's a delay line uh, made in Japan. Um, I've already given it a bit of a, um, a spudging down here to open it up. So the top is clipped on. There's a plastic cover, a little plastic base and four pins. Now inside this thing, if I just slide the cover off, you'll find inside here a piece of quartz. And this is an analog video delay line. The idea is, if I just take the um, little bit of foam off that, come on, I want to break a lot of delicate wires on this, there we go. Um, so down the bottom here, we have got two uh, little transducers, one there and one there. The wires connect up, two wires, one on the top one on the bottom, two wires to each transducer. One transducer will be acting as a transmitter and the other will act as a receiver. And what happens is they are piezoelectric transducers, so the video signal which is coupled into the transmitting side of it produces sound waves at the video frequency, so these are ultrasonic sound waves, and they travel through the quartz, reflect off the far side, and back to the receiving side. I don't know which one of, the, one of these really is the receiver, which one's the transmitter. Let's say this one transmits, sound bounces off the far end, comes back, received here, and back to electrical signal again. Now the total time for the ultrasonic signal to go from transmitter to receiver, bouncing off the far side of that, is exactly 64 microseconds. This is carefully ground to the right length to make the acoustic path 64 microseconds long. So that's one PAL scanline time. So if you send your PAL video in and bounce it off and bring it out again, what you get is a kind of analog memory where the output is exactly one line delayed from the input. So that then you can compare the current scan line with the previous scan line, which has been stored in this analog delay memory. And so you've got an analog comparison of the present scan line and the previous scan line. Now, because PAL, its name stands for phase alternate line, so alternate scan lines have their colour subcarrier phases reversed. So if you take an average comparing the current scan line with the previous scan line, you can arrange for any phase errors in the colour subcarrier to cancel out and for those phase errors that would have produced incorrect colours to instead produce a less saturated colour. So the idea of this little component is to convert phase errors in the colour subcarrier, in other words, colour errors, which can happen in all sorts of cases of transmission problems in the PAL signal, converts them from really quite obvious and undesirable colour changes convert them into, although undesirable, far less obvious reductions in colour saturation. So a bad video signal becomes a slightly washed out video signal rather than a completely the wrong colour video signal. Now these devices were mass produced in huge numbers because they were in every TV set, every PAL video recorder, and this one is quite a modern one, quite a recent one, and is quite small and miniaturised. The early ones are much bigger than this. Every PAL TV set had one. Of course, we don't make PAL TV sets anymore because PAL has no longer... Uh, we, we don't d d don't broadcast PAL anymore. Nobody makes or constructs uh, PAL receivers. So this is something of a museum piece now, a bit of a curiosity.
So there we have it, the PAL 64 microsecond analog delay line.